Hi viewers, welcome to Vision Matters. Uh, today our guest uh, from uh, Russia, uh, Marat Akhmad Janov. Uh, he is a publisher for Heart for Share Fresh and uh, uh, founder and vice chair for Creative Grid, uh, which is really a good organization and, and doing very well. Uh, welcome Marat uh, for this program. Hello. Thank you. Uh, Marat, uh, just uh, want to see that can you saw this the COVID nineteen and this a uh, uh, lot of thing happening uh, as as you are obviously uh, seeing from many angles as a publisher uh, and also the uh, co-founder of this uh, organization, especially this Eur Eurasian Guild, uh, which is actually creative, mainly creative involvement. Uh, how you describe and what is your experience, please? I mean, it's it's kind of unusual experience. Initially, it caught us in a shock because the Eurasian Creative Guild is very fast-growing organization with members in uh, over 54 countries now. And what we've been doing uh, for the past four years is organizing a lot of uh, on uh, on-site events, the book launches, the presentation, talks, exhibitions, festivals. So it was over 120 uh, events every year. So I was traveling from place um, uh, um, to place. And also with the book publishing, uh, most of the books which we publish are um, hard copies. So mm -hmm. even we do e-books, but hard copies is, is, is the main uh, market for us. So caught in uh, now over two months uh, with no abilities to organize any events or do any book launches or even technically print and ship books, uh, it was, okay, first two weeks it was kind of vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, but after two weeks, you realize that everything is frozen and you need to change, you need to adapt. Mm -hmm. uh, so from desperation, uh, you, 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 you move into an uh, exception of, of a situation and you start to become creative. You start to think how things can work out. And um, uh, it does slowly, not in a way uh, I see um, But we are working on... Um, changing uh, uh, operation of both of Eurasian Creative Guild and, and the Hertfordshire Press. So it's, it's a bit painful, it's slow, but it has the light at the end of the tunnel. So we, we're looking very positive. Thank you. So in that, like you know, as a publisher, as obviously uh, uh, traveling many countries, doing physically a lot of involvement, do you think this pandemic and uh, after this uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of big uh, pandemic. Anything will be changed or which uh, you may thinking will be a big challenges or more opportunity for your organization? Because as many people are talking about, you know, a lot of things at the moment. So do you think it actually giving you the more opportunity uh, or it make actually challenges? I think it, it does both. I was thinking about it quite a lot. I mean, sometimes even didn't sleep and was thinking of what's 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 going to happen, how how it's going to work out anymore. I mean, I mean will, will it move on, or will we need to shut it down, or even reduce, it or just take a long pause and see how things will evolve? And I can see both. I see a lot of challenges because um, a lot of people who are working uh, with um, with the, um, creative people around the world, especially the former Soviet Union, mm. they have a limited access and knowledge of internet. Mm. So just moving simply to online doesn't work easy. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of events that we need, if you look at our members, most of our members are over 45, 50 years old. Especially in the former Soviet Union, uh, uh, where people getting uh, online or internet skills uh, in a very young age. So if we talk about people from like 10 years old to 35 years old, no problem. They're all online. Mm -hmm. Starting from 40, you slowly, uh, not slowly actually, quite quickly realize that people who are over 55 in former Soviet Union, only maybe 5 or 6% has skills and uh, experience of using internet. So there's still a lot, a lot of people, talking at least 30% of population in former Soviet Union who does not have a proper skills or access to internet. So this is a challenge, what we can do, how we can teach them. Uh, and we do, we, I mean, we are um, using Zoom very often now, and we created a special uh, menus. We ask a younger members, mm -hmm. uh, to call the older members and explain step by step 
wherever it's possible, we contact their relatives and ask them uh, to help or friends. Uh, like in, in one case, we've got very good uh, writer, Aya Maksutov, who came to, to London. She's very active. But it took her one month before she understood and, you know, how to use Zoom and how she's on Zoom every time. Mm -hmm. So it is a challenge. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. uh, it also changes what we've been doing before. If we've been promoting creative people, now mm -hmm. we're educating creative people. So we're teaching them how to uh -huh. use technology. But at the same time, the positive things, what I see in opportunities, is uh, instead of just going to a different countries mm -hmm. and organizing 120 events, we can do it online and uh, we do Zoom meetings every Wednesday now okay. and we get people from at least 15 countries in a one online platform. Uh, we had a minimum 30 people uh, joining on our Zoom conference. We had up to 50 people and we're expecting that in a few weeks we'll get up to 100 from different, different countries. So the, it also gives a positive. So people can finally communicate with each other online without visiting and see different people on the different topics uh, right now. Thank you. I think really I, I, I appreciate you the two things in, in this, uh, especially this uh, in this pandemic that what are you saying, that uh, uh, you know, you, you're doing with creative uh, activities a long time, but now you are actually teaching creativity because you are, you know, exactly. giving the people to understand and how they are actually using the technology which may have a lot of, you know, input in their life. And, and especially you are breathing from young and elder people jointly. So I think it is a very good message uh, uh, from many people, especially in this lockdown. Uh, and now if you're moving to the, you know, Russia or Moscow and how, how countries affected, do you see that many people are actually suffering or people are very much worried or how, how you can see the people movement, what, what people are actually, general people, I'm talking about the very you know, ordinary people who, who need to understand the technology, who may never use the technology, how, how they're feeling and how you can summarizing this thing uh, uh, by, by your end. Uh, I cannot judge uh, about the whole r r um, Russia. It's so huge. I mean, you know, it's, uh, one, uh, it's the largest country in the world. Um, from my experience, to talking to a different uh, friends or uh, ECG members or mm. my personal contacts in a different part of Russia, is very different situation everywhere. From complete um, dictatorship, lockdown, very strict with police arresting people on the street uh, with uh, uh, fear and uh, desperation yeah. uh, to, to a, a holiday-like mood uh, in where I am now, in Kaliningrad. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's uh, for some places, they did not feel at all. Even the restaurants are open, even the hairdressing was never closed. So it depends, again, the Russia is so big, you cannot tell. Mm. So I know. in the whole country, it have absolutely different experiences. Mm. Uh, it's, it's same, like the Russia have the same experience as Sweden, uh, Brazil, Paraguay, Italy, uh, and other countries, all in one country, mm. all in one country. Uh, from what I can see here in Kaliningrad, people are still didn't get what's happened. They kind of still in uh, confusion. Mm. It's still like yeah. Yeah. They don't understand. Is it good thing they're having a long vacation? Is it the bad thing they're having a long vacation? How long they going to go? Because the government here still does a lot of uh, support. Uh, yeah. I mean, the people who work for theaters, people who work for schools, anyone who's somehow connected to the government funding or social funding still receiving the salaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So economically, they didn't suffer a lot, a lot, yeah. uh, most of the population. But if, if for them is a strange feeling, uh, I spoke just uh, uh, a person who works in a theater uh, yesterday, he, he says, I feel weird because I'm getting my salary on, on, on my credit card, so it's fine. But I'm not doing anything. I'm not producing anything. I'm not performing. Right. So I kind of feel myself useless. Right. Not because I don't have money to eat, but it, because it kind of makes me... Contribute uh, something, contribute something, yes. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because he been doing it every day, going to theater and performing and creating something. Hmm. Uh, so it's kind of creating this disorientation. Of course, for the businesses, especially for the small businesses, 
it's disaster. I spoke to a lot of friends and they're saying, uh, I, I will need to close at least half of my, for, for example, uh, hairdressing uh, salon, barbershops, restaurants, the small shops are closing. Um, so there will be quite a lot of uh, uh, unemployment probably in the next one or two months because uh, small businesses will not recover this year because uh, it, it, uh, just keep paying the rent, keep paying the certain salaries and n not be able to pay the mortgages, rates, the loans will sink a lot of small businesses. So we will see probably later July, August, um, possibly some social, not unrest, but um, difficulties, difficulties uh, uh, across uh, the Russia. People yeah. who are in the small businesses, yeah. uh, which is again, not a high proportion of people, but still we're talking at least 20% of the population involved. Thank you. Marat, I think you also mentioned a very uh, interesting thing that uh, the people, some people, the creative people or working people are thinking they are not doing anything. Uh, uh, that is, I think, actually the uh, uh, something we need to think about. Like people are sitting in a home, they might be lost their creativity because as you are really experienced, I know you, you are doing a lot of things in, in many countries. So in that perspective, do you think that we should uh, learn something from this pandemic or what kind of message you want to be actually uh, elaborate uh, to the, uh, the global, global in, in the globally, then how people should learn this pandemic. And if something, this type of thing coming, or obviously you don't know what will be happen. Uh, do you see something? Do you have any, any kind of, you know, from your own, uh, thinking point of view, like as a creative person, as uh, running and founding something, what do you think about for the young generation or uh, something that you can tell to the world? Um, yeah, from my uh, point of view, uh, for what I've done and what I do recommend to creative people around the world, mm -hmm. our members, is uh, don't get into depression. Uh, go and do revision of what you've done before. It's a great opportunity to go back to your roots, to see maybe you've done something 10 years ago, 20 years ago, which needs to be uh, re rewritten, which needs to be redrawn, which needs to be resynced. And you will realize how much treasure you've got because you've been always running, running, running uh, uh, like a hamster in the wheel. Mm -hmm. So this is a great opportunity for you to go back Mm -hmm. to rethink, uh, reconnect with old uh, friends, uh, go back to your family members, get in touch by using the modern um, technologies. And this will support you, and the second time will give you a new inspiration. You will realize that there's so much things um, you can do, and when lockdown is finished, you will be prepared. Um, and even if lockdown will not finish, or it will change our life anyway. Somehow we will need to, to keep a social distancing and travel or will reduce anyway for at least next two years. Uh, there's still a lot of things you can do from home. A lot of things you can do by using modern technologies. You can do films, you can do music performance, you can do concerts, uh, you can still write books and do them online. Um, so there's a lot of things you will need to learn you will need to start using and also again it just gives you uh, more time i mean you're not spending time going uh, on a public transport one hour from london to to cambridge mm -hmm. and you're not to, i mean you've got at least two spare hours which you can use wisely and it's mm -hmm. up to you how you use them mm -hmm. uh, so i think people will need to kind of do new time management and use it effectively very good mm -hmm. Thank you. So I think uh, actually the, what, uh, uh, what I understood and I think the, you are um, giving to the uh, in-depth thought to the world, the uh, two messages really I, I want to recap from this interview uh, that one is that um, your people should learn more creativity in, in, from this pandemic. Uh, and then a, a second thing is like in a bridging from young people to the elder or aging population. And the third one is actually uh, absolutely the time management like in uh, as we we can see people are actually sitting in a home and and doing m much better than when it was not a lockdown or people are traveling here to there and it is a lot of time 
consuming matter also happening in, in our daily life. So that is actually a very good one. And uh, also, I, I also like really understood that you are saying like uh, people need to be more creative, especially for, for future that uh, they need to understand how this type of thing will be, you know, uh, come uh, from a, a different point of view and how they can actually make the solution and sort of thing. So it is actually another thing for from young people especially to make more uh, uh, creativity, more understanding about this type of pandemic, uh, how they can survive and to <coughs> realize their real world. And do you think, last one, uh, any lesson that we didn't learn from this pandemic? Do you see anything, something that we, sh we should care more just to, before you finishing your uh, conversation, anything that you may thinking that we should yeah, yes. I mean, learn? Uh, there's a lot of lessons to learn. For example, if you look uh, at how nature reacts to the uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. it does appreciate actually. Uh, the water are clear in Venice, mm. uh, there's less pollution in the big cities, mm, very there's good. quite life uh, for flourishing. So maybe it is not a bad thing. Maybe we just need to appreciate, maybe we need to give a bit more freedom to the nature. Uh, maybe it yes. is a sign from nature that we, we've gone too far. Um, uh, so kind of appreciation, kind of sees that not everything is lost. We still can um, rehabilitate. We still can help uh, the nature, and uh, unless the nature will decide we are uh, parasites and will get rid of us, so, so we, we need to be careful. So it's maybe a sign. Um, another thing is appreciate um, uh, personal connection. Uh, so when you are out of lockdown, you probably will try to find more time um, to see your relatives, your parents, uh, your children, uh, the loved ones, mm -hmm. the one you care about. Mm -hmm. um, so previously, again, being in a very rush lifestyle, mm -hmm. we didn't pay much attention. So now when we have time to rethink, uh, to see what are, uh, things are important to us, Mm. Uh, we would like to to share more with the people uh, we love, and again, and the third one is kind of uh, again the opportunity to, to, to for the creativeness. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, it, it gives us, I mean, it's outcome. So we'll need to be more creative. And if if we look in the past, if you look on Amar Khayyam, he been creating during the plague. We look in Shostakovich. He wrote his. Um, uh, uh, a famous symphony uh, uh, during a Second World War when he was in um, Stalingrad, uh, in uh, Leningrad, actually. Mm -hmm. If we look at a lot of things which was created, was created during pandemic or war or lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of stimulates us to be more creative. Thank you. Marat, thank you very much. And I appreciate your time and uh, giving us uh, time uh, in this type of pandemic uh, uh, to discuss. And I hope I will see you soon in London and uh, stay well and keep well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking forward. Thank you. It was a great conversation.